The trend's still moving on, and these are new census projections, the first projections that were done since the 2010 census. And, uh, you know, they confirm what a lot of us thought were happening, but it makes it look very, very vivid for people who uh, were a little skeptical about how our changes were occurring in this country. And what it shows is that we have a continued growth of our minority population, um, and uh, over the next 50 years, we're going to see a decline in our white population over the, the broad spectrum of these projections, which go from 2012 to 2060. Uh, we're going to see a 10 percent decline in our white population and more than doubling of our minority population. And so in the around, around the year 2043, it's about three decades from now, uh, we're going to have nationally what you would call a majority minority population. That would be more minorities than there are whites. Uh, and, you know, the bigger gains uh, numerically are from Hispanics. Uh, there are still gains for blacks, although the growth rate isn't as high, but then Asians and people who are more than one race. The trends that we're seeing right now, the growth of these minorities, especially what I call new minorities, Hispanics, Asians, I mean, they've been with us for a long time, but they've been growing rapidly quickly, and I call them new minorities for that reason, you know, are partially due to immigration, recent immigration, and also fertility levels. So we now have enough Hispanics in this country where the bigger growth for Hispanics is from fertility, not from immigration, even though we continue to have uh, Latino immigration in the United States. For Asians, still immigration is the biggest driver of change because their big immigration waves didn't start till a little bit later. But those two aspects, immigration and fertility, is what's driving these changes. And because both of them tend to be concentrated on younger parts of the population, that's why the young part of the population gets to see the biggest growth right now. Of course, they'll continue to age and they'll get older over time. For the white population, doesn't have as much immigration and only a tiny amount of immigration are whites in the United States. And they're older, which means there are fewer women in their childbearing years proportionately than was the case, say, back in the baby boom. And they tend to, even at that, have generally lower fertility than some of these other groups. So for all of those reasons, uh, the white population isn't probably won't be replacing itself after we get to a certain stage uh, while these other groups are going to continue to you know, grow in, in large numbers. And even if we don't have the same levels of immigration that we have now, uh, we're still going to see the shrinking of the white population. So the minority population will still grow to a greater degree. Politics is impacted by this. I think well, I don't have to say this to anybody who's been awake for the last couple of months that the, the demography of the electorate has been very important uh, in this last election. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, when you're looking at all these different interest groups, um, uh, you'll see that uh, not just Hispanics, but different Asian groups and African Americans, they're going to be growing in lots of ways. And these new projections show that in the year uh, 2027, the 18 to 29 year old population is going to be majority minority. I think both parties realize this now as a result of the last election that you need to cater to the interests of these different groups. And the interests of people who are new, younger families are quite different from sort of the older white population. Uh, the younger part of the population is interested in the education of their kids, they're interested in having affordable housing. They're interested in health care for their kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, they may be interested in some of the, the, uh, the programs that affect the seniors, but those are the things that they're going to want to focus on. Not just immigration, but, but a whole array of things that are a somewhat different package of issues than the older population is going to be interested in. those new people need to be ready to plug into the kind of labor force that we need in, to keep our economy going, a knowledge-based labor force, one that's globalized, and that goes hand in hand with how we're going to prepare our young new minorities in the United States. And I think that's really an important challenge for us, because we know from a lot of the literature uh, that a lot of the first and second generation uh, immigrants uh, don't have the levels of education uh, that mainstream America used to have, they're improving. They're doing much better now than they were 10 years ago or 15 years ago, and their families are quite interested in getting ahead. But there's lots we have to do 
as a country, whether it's federal programs, state programs, local programs, to really focus. I think this is really an important national challenge for us.